Hello, I'm Camilla Carr, and welcome to our session on job interview coaching. You're probably wondering, what can I do to really nail a job? Well, that's why we're here to tell you how you can do this. With the economy the way it is now, you may have three, four hundred people applying for one job. So you have to figure out how can I stand out among all these other applicants? How can I make the potential employer remember me? The first thing that you're going to do, and you would be surprised how many people do not do this, you need to research your company. You need to know something about it. Maybe you need to know how many employees work there, the history. What does it do to give back to the community? First of all, a job interview is a conversation. It is a conversation. It is also a time for you to show just how great you are. So I know you're going to be nervous. Everybody's nervous. And that, that's okay. And a little bit of nerves, it gives you energy. So that's all right. You must find out how you can reduce that nervousness. I used to be a presenter on television, and is, I did it for many years, but every time, right before that camera came on, I was really nervous. So for me, what I did, before the ca I did this. I clenched my hands, and then I knew it was showtime. So you have to do whatever makes you more relaxed. But what you're going to find out is that after you do this particular coaching, you're going to walk in there more comfortable, more confident, and less nervous. They did a study and they took a look at all different kinds of communications. Uh, the way I'm communicating with you, perhaps you've got a lecture, you've got, you're in a sales meeting, it doesn't matter. And they divided it into three components. Now here are the three components. Words, voice, and body language. Now if these three components equal 100%, what percentage would you give to body language? What percentage would you give to voice? What percentage would you give to words? Okay, what do you think? Body language, 55%. Voice, 38%. Words, 7%. So what does this say? You're thinking, well, it really doesn't matter what you say. It's how you look, okay? And it's what, it's how, and how you use your voice. That is not I repeat, that is not what this is saying. What it's saying is you look at this like it's a pyramid, like it's a mountain, actually. So here's the mountain, okay? What this says is that if your body language and if your voice do not match your words, people are not going to believe you. I'll give you an example. Suppose I sit up here and I say, I am so happy to be here. Now, do you believe that? Come on. You know, or I'm a real people person. Huh? No. But I'm really, I really am happy to be here, and I'm a people person. See the difference? Now, I want you to, I want to point out that this division with words, voice, and body language, they're based on Western standards. Nevertheless, there is one universal piece of body language. People use it all around the world. Can you guess what it is? Smile. That's it. That's what it is. Now people are saying, well, I don't have a good voice. This is not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is how do you use your voice? For example, you want to make a point. Did you see? What did I do? I slowed down. Or body language. You want to list some of your skills. Well, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this. Some people think that they shouldn't use their hands when they talk. If you use your hands when you talk, use your hands in the interview. It's fine. This is not what you want to do. You don't want to be, okay, you don't want to do that, okay? That's not what you want to do. But I have seen people, and they're like this during the whole interview. Now, what do you think happens? For those of you, I want you to just do this, okay? And automatically, you're even more tense. But suppose, but suppose you just keep your hands in your lap like this, or you keep them down to your side. 
a, you're a little bit less tense. And that's very important, of course, when you do this job interview. People are always telling me that, you know, one of the biggest reasons I'm so nervous when I go into an interview is because I don't know what questions they're going to ask me. Before you do that interview, there are, pro there are usually some likely questions that they are going to ask. Write those down before you go and get familiar with the answers. Let me give you an example. For example, tell me about yourself. That many times makes people uncomfortable. You really have to, because they want to know what kind of person are you? And by knowing that, how are you going to fit into our corporate culture? Why did you leave your last job? Do you know anything about our company? Now, if you get this question, you can really shine, because remember, you've done the research, and you know about their commitment to corporate social responsibility. What did you like about your last job? What would you like to be doing five years from now? What is your ideal work environment? And here's one that always gets people sometimes. List your strengths and your weaknesses. Strengths are easy, but it's the weaknesses. Because people, they, they want to get the job. They don't want people to know that, well, they're, you know, they have a weakness that's going to keep them from being a good candidate. So find a way to think about your weakness, and everybody has them, that in a way that you can put it in a good light so that it will show that you're still a good candidate for this job. Now, you're in the actual interview. And, let, and this is the single biggest question that you need to answer. And that is, why should I hire you? So what you want to do, you want to have a, what's a message here, OK? I'm just going to switch sides here to make it a, a message. Now, in that message, you're going to have some facts or some data. Now, that will probably come from your resume. This is what can make the potential employer or the interviewer remember you. An example. What do I mean by that? Let me walk you through a typical day. That is the, one of the best ways to give an example of, of, of some of your skills. So when they say, I can multitask. So in my last job, at one point, I had a project that was due in an hour. I had someone that needed an answer about a, a, a product in 10 minutes. At that point, and I also, at the same time, was, was fielding an irate customer's phone call. What I did is I did, I, I took care of the customer first, then I got back to the product question, and then I prepared my um, presentation. Again, paint them a picture. Show them how, the kind of employee that you are and that you can be for them. Finally, you can have the best resume on the planet. You can be the most qualified person for the job. And you can remember every point that we've discussed today. But you know what? It will mean nothing if you do not practice. Practice, practice, practice. Take your questions, give them to someone, and practice. Some of my clients say, well, why can't I just do it in front of a mirror? No, you will not be doing an interview looking in a mirror. You'll be looking at a live person. So practice, practice, practice. And you know what? You're going to be surprised how much more confident and how, more, and how much more comfortable you're going to be when you walk into that interview. So what are we going to do now? We're going to go out and get that job, right? Oh, come on, come on. A little bit more force here. Go out and get that job. Make it happen. Thank you.